I haven't seen a lot of resources on how to use and animate text in Procreate Dreams, so I thought I'd create this video that covers all the settings that you'll need to know in order to do that. Additionally, I've written a blog post that covers all the settings and provides step-by-step -step instructions with high-resolution screenshots, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below, as well as a downloadable PDF that you can get from Gumroad for free. Hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and let's get started. So if I want to create a new project in Procreate Dreams, I just click this plus button here, and this brings up the screen to create a new movie. And I have several options here that I can choose from. If I click on these three buttons, I can change my frames per second and my duration. Currently that's set to two. I click on the 4K, I can change what resolution this is. If I swipe up and down, you can see I can change the size. I'm gonna leave mine widescreen 4K. In order to create the project, just click draw. Now if you want to get back to those settings and change those, you can click on the name of the project. So you can make your changes here and once you're finished, click done. If I want to rename my project, I can click on this button here and this takes me back to the theater. If I press and hold on the project, I get some options, rename, duplicate, share, copy to iCloud and delete. I want to click rename. So here's where you rename your project. So for this project, I'm going to rename it to animated text. And when you're finished, just click done. To go into my project again, I want to tap on it. If you want to add text to your Procreate Dreams movie, just click on the plus symbol. Here's where all your add options are, track, photos, video, text, and files. I want to click on text. Now this creates a text box and it already has placeholder text in it. And you can see here we have some formatting options, cut, copy, paste, select, select all, and edit text. So to edit this text, I want to double tap and then I'll bring up my keyboard and I want to change this to POW exclamation point. Now you can see that the text box isn't wide enough for this new text. So if I just press and drag on one of these dots, I can spread the text box out. And now I can click on this button here to go to my edit options. Now you can see I have two tabs, fonts and format. Fonts allows me to change the font, change the variation of that font, and these will vary depending on the font, change the color of the text, and import a font. So for this project, I'm going to double click to highlight this, and I'm going to scroll up to Browood font. So this is a free font, so if you want to use it to follow on this project, you just go to the link below, download it, unzip it somewhere where you can find it, and then click on import, navigate to that file, click on the font, and it will import it for you. So before I leave this tab, I also want to change the color to a blue. Everything looks good. Now we go to the Format tab. So the Format tab offers several formatting options. The first is Size, so I can just drag that up. And in addition to dragging, I can also press on one of these and change this. If I want to change this to a minus number, I can just type in the number and hit the minus key. So I'm going to go back here and type in 250. Kerning is the space between two letters or characters, so if you wanted to like make the space between the O and W wider, you could do that with kerning. Tracking changes the space between all letters or characters, so I can drag that around, you can see what that looks like. Leading is the space between two lines of text, so it's like line spacing. Baseline's a little unusual, and I'll show you an example of that. But what happens is that your text is sitting on an invisible line, and when you adjust the baseline, you raise or lower where that line is. So if I click on underline, you can see where that's underlined now, but if I change baseline, it'll add that space. So what's happening is that invisible line is moving away from the text. So I'm going to click on that, change it back to zero. So over here you have the alignment for the text within the text box. So I can click left, right, center, justified, which if this were longer, it would spread it out between the margins. So I'm going to click center. You have all caps outlines, underline, strike through, vertical, which I'm still not sure exactly what that does because I click on it, see it reverses my text. If I turn it off, it's moved my text box. So to undo that, I'm going to take two fingers and tap the screen. And that's all your formatting options. So for this project, I want to change tracking to minus 12. So I can just tap in here, hit 12, and then minus. Now you can see that our letters are overlapping each other. And that covers all the formatting and font options you have in these panels. So now I'm going to click Done at the right of your screen. 
and I'm back to the timeline. So on the timeline, you have access to several different options to animate the text. So currently my playhead is at zero, and you can see that here. I'm going to tap on it, and this gives me the action panel. From the action panel, I have three different options, move, filter, and edit. I'll click on move. From the move menu, you have move and scale, warp, and distort. So if I click move, you can see that sets a keyframe here, and if I drag up, I get my playhead again, but you can see the keyframe underneath it. So if I drag back down, I've got that keyframe again. So I can drag this to increase or decrease the size. If I click on the edge, you see I get this little gray curve. I can rotate it and do that. I can also touch and drag it around. So if I want to delete this keyframe, I can hold against it and hit delete. So for the next one is warp, and I want to zoom in so you can see this. If I click on the playhead, click move, click warp. You can see I get these four dots across the top, side, bottom, and the other side. I can increase those from four to eight if I want to. So it gives you more control of that. So I'm going to go back. Now for this project, I want to warp this a bit. So I'm going to grab this top and drag it up. Same dot here, these bottom dots. And you can see we've set the keyframe for that. Now I'm going to click Undo to get rid of that because I want to show you Distort. And you can't have a Distort and a Warp on the same object. So I'm going to click on this, Move, Distort. And you can see if I drag these corners around, I can distort this. You know, and this helps if you're trying to set these in perspective. So instead of undoing this, if you want, you can click and hold on that keyframe and hit delete keyframe and it'll revert it back to the original. So the next setting is filters. So I can do opacity, Gaussian blur, sharpen, noise, and HSB. So obviously opacity is just fading this in and out. I'm going to delete that keyframe. Click the play it again, filter Gaussian blur. This just blurs the text, and again, all this is completely animatable. So I'm going to hold that, delete the key. Now sharpen, you really won't see anything on this because it's already sharp, but if you have a need for this, you can use it on the text. It just doesn't work on what I'm using as an example. Okay, if I click on the playhead, click filter, and click noise, I can see those options, and noise gives you a lot of functionality. So up here at the top you see clouds, billows, and ridges. Clouds sets the most coarse looking noise. So if I grab that, you can see that noise coming through. And it's called clouds because at large scales it appears to be cloud-like. Billows look similar to clouds, but it has a billowing effect that gives a finer detailed and textured look to the noise. So if I go to clouds and turn that off and go to billows and bring that out, see what that looks like. Bring that down. My next one is ridges. Ridges makes the noise appear to be more detailed at large scale. It gives a harder edge and similar look to light reflecting on water. So if I spread that, see what that looks like. Now at this scale, this all looks very similar, but this could vary depending on what you're using it for. Now each one of these has the same settings at the bottom, and that's amount, which is how much noise you're adding. Scale, which changes the size of the noise. And if I drag scale across, you can see how that changes. Octaves adjust the complexity and adds more detail to the noise. So if I bring the scale in and change the octaves. Again, on my font, it's kind of hard to tell. And then turbulence twists and warps the noise, giving it more complexity and detail. So you can see that changing, but again, with this text, uh, it's not really providing a good example. So in addition to these settings, you click on advanced noise and it gives you a couple of different options. Offset changes the noise from left to right on the X axis. Offset Y changes the noise up and down in the Y axis. Travel is a bit complicated. It changes the noise in the Z axis, which this is a 2D program. And Z axis is usually something you think of in a 3D program, which is forwards and backwards. So it does change the noise in that direction. According to the manual, even though the noise is on a 2D object, it can be manipulated in a 3D space. So that's what that is. With additive on, the noise becomes transparent and lets the image show through even though it's set to 100%. So that way, at least in text, you can see the color of the text through it. 
Multi-channel means that it's either monochromatic, which in this instance would be like gray or whatever text color it's taking on, or multi-channel, which means it has multiple colors. So if I drag this down and I bring this up and click on advanced noise again, turn multi-channel on, you can kind of see it how it has a color to it. So it's no longer monochromatic. See how that's just white? In additive, when I turn that off, you can only see the noise. You can't see the color of the font through the noise. So that's how those work. I can just drag this down, click and hold, hit delete keyframe. So I'm going to tap the playhead, go to filter HSB, and this just means hue, saturation, brightness. You can change the color of your font here, and you can animate those colors. So you can just drag those around to get the color you want. Click and hold to delete that. And the last one is edit. And all this does is allows you to split a track. So if I bring my playhead down to here, click it, hit edit, split, you can see it's now split that track. So now I could delete this, move it around, whatever I wanted to do. So I'm going to undo that. So now I have my single track back. So for this animation, I'm going to warp this text a bit to give it some character. So I'm going to click on the playhead, click on move, click on warp. And now I can bring these points up. And I can also drag these points in the center that are attached to those. Okay, I think that gives us some character. And you can see I got my keyframe here. I'm not going to animate the warp part, but I wanted to warp it for looks. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to animate this to be really small and then come forward really big and then settle back down. So to do that, I'm going to click on the playhead, click on Move, and click on Move and Scale. Now one issue with this, as you can see my bounding box, is really a lot of space up here. And if I go to scale this, it's not scaling from the anchor point where I want it to. So if I click on these three dots, I can click on Edit Anchor, and you can see my anchor is now higher. And that's because it's centered within the bounding box, but that's not what I want. I want it to be centered within the font. Because if I scale it or rotate, I want to happen from the middle of the font, not the middle of the bounding box. So I'm going to touch that and drag it down to the center of that. See how that looks? And then I can click Done. And now if I scale this, you can see it's scaling from the center of that text, which is what I want. So at the beginning of my timeline, I want to drag this down so that it's really small and you can't see it. And you have to be careful. If you do it too much, it'll flip over. Okay, so now you can't see it. Now I'm going to go to frame 18. And you can see those up here. So now I'm at frame 18. Scroll in, and we'll drag this up. And you can see it automatically set a keyframe. So there's your keyframe. Now I'm going to drag this up to be larger than the stage. Maybe a little bit more. So if I drag this back, you can see how that's expanding. So now I'm going to go to 24. And I'll drag it again towards the middle so it kind of settles down a bit. Now I can hit play. Now if you look, you can see it's easing into that largeness at 18, but I don't want that. So I'm going to show you how to adjust your easing. So you see I've got these keyframes here. If I click, and I keep saying click because I use a mouse so much, I really mean press and hold or tap. If I press and hold between those keyframes, I get an additional menu. Now some of this will vary depending on what type of keyframe it is, but they will all have easing options. So if I click Set All Easings, so these easing options mean different things. Linear means that throughout the animation, it's the same speed throughout. So there's no smoothing or anything like it. it's just one standard speed. Ease in means it starts slow, and then it gets faster, and it's as fastest at the end. Ease out means it starts fast, and it slows down at the end. Ease in and ease out means that it starts slow, it gets faster, it's fastest at the middle, then it starts slowing down at the end. So for this one, I'm going to ease in. So it's going to start slow and then get really fast at the end. So I'm going to click that and we'll hit play again. OK, I'm going to pause that. The next thing I want to do is change the background color. So to change that, I want to click on this timestamp here. You can see I have some options with onion skinning and then a background color. I want to click the background color. I want to change it to a yellow. Okay, I think that gives us some good contrast. 
Now it's still kind of boring. So to fix that, I'm going to click on Draw and Paint Mode, which is here. So now you can see my onion skinning is on. If I click here and I want to hide that, I can click on that. See, I no longer see it. So I'm going to drag this down to the beginning so PALS disappeared. So I'm going to add some halftone dots to this so it has more of a comic book look. So to do that, I've got some free halftone brushes online. I'll leave a link below and they're free to use. So you just need to download those, unzip them, and drag the brushes into Procreate Dreams. So to do that, I'm going to go to my main screen. I'm going to click on Files. And I've got a Procreate Dream Brushes folder here. You can see I've got this halftone here zipped. If I click in the folder where I've unzipped it, you can see I have my different brushes. So I'm going to open Procreate Dreams and drag this at the bottom right to reduce the size of it. So I'm going to drag this folder over. And now I can just grab these and drag them over into my stage. You can see they're importing. Okay, now if I click on my brushes, you can see if I scroll down, I have these brushes here added. So I'm going to click on Grayley's 90 degree dot which is what I want to use for this one, so drag that one in. Now I'm going to grab this and come down to go to flipbook mode. And I'm going to make sure my brush is as big as it'll get, which is this setting here. This is the opacity setting. I'll make sure it's all the way up. I'm going to hold and pick this color that's the background. Then I'm going to click on that and I'm going to darken it up just a bit with a little bit of orange. And now I'm going to go across here in one stroke. Now that that's done, if I drag across the timeline, you can see that the half tones aren't filling up the timeline. So to fix that, I'm going to share my timeline is visible all across the screen. I'll click and hold on that frame. And now you can see I have these options here, rename, highlight, blend mode, mask, fill duration, track options. So what I'm going to do is click fill duration. You can see that fills out the entire timeline. So now if I play it, you can see the half tones stay there throughout the animation. So the last animation change I want to make on this is I want the text to rotate as I play through the timeline. So if I click on my first keyframe, you can see that rotation is zero, which is what I want. Now if I go down to my keyframe on 18, I click on that, my rotation is zero. I'm going to click in there and change that to 360. So if I scroll back to the beginning and I scrub forward, you can see it's turning one complete rotation until it gets to 18. And because the next one is at zero, it's going to turn back a complete rotation when it gets to 24. So if I play through this. So to finalize this, I want to add a sound effect. And to do that, I need to add a track. So I'm going to hit plus track. And now I need to add an audio file to that track. So I'm going to use a free sound effect that I found online that you can download for free. And I'll leave a link in the description below. You just need to save it to your iPad, and then wherever you saved it, you can just hit plus, file, navigate to where you saved it. So on mine, it's under sound effects. I just touch that to select it and then hit open. And now you can see the sound effect. So this sound effect has three different sound effects on it, but I only need the first one. So I'm going to drag the playhead here. And with it in between the first sound effect and the second sound effect, I'm going to tap it, hit edit, and hit split. Now you can see I've got them on two different tracks. So I can hold my finger on this, hit delete content, and now I just have the one sound effect. So I want the sound effect. You can see the waveform here. I'm going to drag this over to 18. And I want this sound effect to be the loudest when the lettering is at its biggest. So I'm going to press and hold, and I'm going to drag that over to about right there. Now if I play this, okay, so that's our final result. Again, I just want to create a simple demonstration to show you how you can format and animate text to procreate dreams. So if you want to see this in a written format with detailed screenshots for every step, I'll leave a link to my blog article in the description below. You can also download the same article with all the screenshots from Gumroad for free, and I'll leave that link as well. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.